Welcome to this special introduction to the West Virginia Bureau for Public Health. The Bureau for Public Health is one of five bureaus within the West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources. As a state health department, the programs and services we offer will touch everyone in West Virginia at some point in their lives, whether it's through our Birth to Three program, coordinated school health programs, safe drinking water initiatives, partnerships with local health departments, or support of minority health objectives. We're even there when disaster strikes. This video will familiarize you with several of our Bureau's many units and the critical functions each one performs on behalf of the citizens of our state and the nation. As you watch this video and learn more about the Bureau for Public Health, keep in mind that this is just a brief overview of the many duties your state health department performs every day. In addition to the information you'll learn in this video, we also offer many other programs and services. For example, everyone in West Virginia has a local health department that provides services within their region. Our Bureau has a dedicated center that works to support these local health departments as they work to deliver public health services and improve community health. Our Office of Minority Health works with West Virginia's most vulnerable populations to address disease prevention and health promotion, as well as encourage healthier lifestyle choices and the use of health care services. The Office of the Chief Medical Examiner coordinates the state's various fatality and mortality review teams and performs death investigations. You may discover that the Bureau has important responsibilities you weren't even aware of, and you will certainly recognize a commonality of purpose and shared goals. Working together, we embrace the values of community, science, health equity, prevention, and wellness. We strive to fulfill our ultimate goal of helping West Virginia citizens live healthy lives in healthy communities. The Center for Threat Preparedness was established in 2002 in response to the September 11th attacks. Supported primarily through federal funding our main mission is to assess and support the public health and healthcare systems during an emergency and coordinate the response of the West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources as a component of the broader state response. We accomplish this by supporting public health and medical services, including mass care, emergency assistance, and housing and human services through our various programs. We also partner with the West Virginia National Guard, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, voluntary organizations active in disaster, and many other organizations to coordinate our multidisciplinary approach to getting the job done. Programs we administer include medical countermeasures, emergency operations coordination, public health planning and exercises, responder health and safety, volunteer management, risk communication, public information and warning, and more. The Center for Threat Preparedness staff are on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, ready to respond to emergencies around the clock. Our efforts are focused on protecting the public and making sure programs in the Bureau for Public Health and the Department of Health and Human Resources continue to run smoothly or resume as quickly as possible during a crisis. The West Virginia Health Statistics Center, or HSC, was created with an executive order by Governor Jay Rockefeller in 1980. The center has two main functions. First, to be the state's official repository of vital records, and second, to analyze and make this information and other health-related data that we collect available to help inform state health policy and planning decisions. Included in the first function is the collection, certification, registration, and production of certified copies of vital event records, such as birth, marriage, divorce, death, induced termination of pregnancy, and fetal deaths, including miscarriage and stillbirth. The center also processes declarations of paternity affidavits, court-ordered adoptions, and legal name changes. 
Maintenance of vital records is critical since they are needed for many legal purposes. Certified copies of birth and marriage records are required as primary identification for obtaining driver's licenses and passports. Death certificates are used to open estates for probate. Administratively, verification of birth and death data is used by numerous federal and state agencies to either open or close records, such as Medicaid, Social Security, or other retirement plans. The second major function of the HSC is behavioral surveillance of adult West Virginia residents. This is accomplished through the Behavior Risk Factor Surveillance System, or BRIFUS, using computer-assisted telephone interview software. The HSC surveys over 6,000 adult residents annually. The BRIFUS survey has been in place since 1984 and is funded by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. We also disseminate the information collected in the BRIFUS and the vital statistics system. The work is largely done by a team of experienced epidemiologists who utilize statistical software and other tools to study BRIFUS, vital statistics, hospital discharge, and other data sets. We then generate database reports that are used by other public health programs and policymakers university researchers as well as federal and state governments. The HSC generates two major reports annually, the Annual Vital Statistics Report and a report on the data from BRIFUS. The HSC also has produced major special reports on topics like dementia, asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, obesity, youth physical activity, birth outcomes, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, arthritis, and numerous statistical briefs on a wide variety of topics. Our belief that prevention plays a significant role in reducing illness and chronic disease in West Virginia guides the work that we do in the Office of Community Health Systems and Health Promotion. We strive to accomplish this and fulfill our primary goal of improving the health of West Virginia citizens through training and support from our community partners, including small hospitals, primary care providers, free clinics, public schools, and local health departments. Our staff works in four divisions, tobacco prevention, health promotion and chronic disease, primary care, and rural health and recruitment. Although we don't provide services directly, we make it possible to enhance the work of our community and academic partners through funding support from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the West Virginia Legislature, and other sources. We are faced with many challenges in coordinating health and wellness programs in our communities, and the work we do makes a significant difference. We provide resources and education to community decision makers across West Virginia to assist in creating policies that increase healthy environments, we also provide resources and classes for chronic disease self-management. We train school staff to prepare nutritious meals and work with physical education personnel to help create more active schools. We support programs to reduce tobacco use among West Virginia's youth and adult populations. In addition, we recruit and place healthcare providers in rural primary care centers and other facilities in underserved communities. We achieve this through the help of our national and federal partners, including the National Health Services Corps, the Recruitment and Retention Community Project, the State Loan Repayment Program, and the J-1 Visa Waiver Program. The Office of Emergency Medical Services, or OEMS, is the regulatory body responsible for providing pre-hospital care within the state of West Virginia. We strive to protect the safety and health of West Virginia citizens by ensuring quality, pre-hospital care, and trauma care in emergency environments. Our office accomplishes this within the following four units. The communication unit provides the backbone of the statewide interoperable radio network. This backbone includes five medical command units that give guidance and direction to emergency medical services or EMS providers in the field. Unit staff ensure that the 131 towers providing network connectivity are all operational and in good repair at all times. A variety of other agencies and offices use this radio network including the West Virginia State Police, the Division of Natural Resources, 
the Department of Highways, Federal Bureau of Investigation, 911 centers, Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, local health departments, hospitals, and much more. The certification and licensure unit ensures the appropriate licensure of EMS agencies throughout the state, as well as recertification and certification of all EMS providers, including emergency medical technicians, paramedics, and mobile critical care nurses. This unit oversees more than 200 EMS agencies, 1,200 vehicles, and over 10,000 certified personnel in the state that provide nearly one half million ambulance runs annually. It's the responsibility of this unit to make sure that all of these individuals and agencies are qualified to provide the appropriate level of service in emergency situations. The trauma unit provides trauma center designation and acute care facility categorization. It also assists with trauma and emergency care system organization, operation, and accountability through performance improvement and medical review. In addition, the unit identifies facilities best equipped and staffed to care for patients with emergency illnesses and injuries. The unit's goal is to reduce the severity of emergency injury, illness, and improve outcomes for the citizens and visitors of West Virginia. The data management unit focuses not only on the definition, collection, storage, protection, and retrieval of data, but also on the conversion of this data into accessible, understandable, and useful information that will help further our mission. This unit maintains multiple systems for OMS operations. These systems include SMART, our state medical asset resource tracking tool for bed availability and resource tracking for EMS hospitals, the credentialing information system for the tracking of certification, recertification, and educational information for state EMS providers, as well as drug shortage reporting, investigation, and complaint reporting, medical command reporting, and much more. The Office of Environmental Health Services, or OEHS, works to protect the health of West Virginia citizens and visitors by regulating environmental impacts and exposures that may be detrimental to human health. Environmental health is an important global issue and has been the backbone of public health in the United States since the late 18th century. The field continues to grow in complexity and must continue to expand in order to address both natural and man-made responsibilities. The World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have rated environmental problems among the most important health issues and global threats. They also rank advances in environmental health and sanitation among public health's greatest accomplishments. OEHS has three divisions that are responsible for overseeing specific areas of environmental health. The Environmental Engineering Division regulates public water systems in West Virginia. Because drinking water is essential to life, it must be safe to consume. Our office regulates drinking water based on the federal safe drinking water requirements. It is important to note that approximately 75% of the population of West Virginia receives water in their homes from a public water system. All residents and visitors who utilize restaurants, schools, and businesses may also be drinking public water that is regulated by OEHS. The Public Health Sanitation Division, or PHS, has the overall responsibility of regulating environmental and public health sanitation issues that may, through direct or indirect causes, adversely affect the health and well-being of our citizens, communities, or state as a whole. To accomplish this, PHS regulates industries that provide food, bottled water, and milk. We work to protect these products from infectious microorganisms through the proper handling, treatment, and disposal of medical waste. We also train sanitarians in local health departments to inspect local restaurants, child care facilities, and other areas. The Radiation, Toxics, and Indoor Air Division is responsible for an array of statewide environmental public health programs that protect the citizens and visitors of West Virginia. These include asbestos compliance, childhood lead poisoning prevention, clandestine drug laboratory remediation, radiological health, and the state radon educational and awareness programs. These programs are designed to educate and prevent human exposure to known toxic substance. In addition, the radiological health program is authorized to inspect and investigate facilities that are using radiation producing devices, 
in order to protect our citizens from dangerous levels of radiation. The Office of Epidemiology and Prevention Services, or OEPS, has more than 80 employees who help achieve our mission of tracking the occurrence of diseases, providing prevention interventions, and training and educating the public on how to protect themselves from potential diseases. The OEPS consists of six divisions, including infectious disease epidemiology, immunization services, cancer epidemiology, STD, HIV, and hepatitis, tuberculosis elimination, and epidemiologic informatics and evaluation. The Division of Infectious Disease Epidemiology conducts surveillance of infectious diseases, monitors communicable disease threats, identifies and investigates outbreaks throughout the state. The division also consults on communicable disease issues with physicians, veterinarians, and other health care providers, and works very closely with local health departments to provide technical assistance, training, and educational resources. The Division of Immunization Services supplies vaccines to pediatricians, family practices, hospitals, and local health departments, and keeps them up to date on new immunization recommendations. The division assesses immunization rates and identifies at-risk groups for improvement or special emphasis. It also organizes public immunization events and promotes community awareness of immunization's role in protecting the families and communities and individuals of all ages from infectious diseases. The Division of Cancer Epidemiology collects information on all cancer cases in the state of West Virginia, and it's recorded in the West Virginia's Cancer Registry. Staff analyze the Cancer Registry results in a comprehensive portrait of West Virginia's cancer patterns which is published yearly in its annual report. Registry data is used to evaluate the impact of cancer prevention, control strategies, as well as better inform the public with policies. The division of STD, HIV, and hepatitis provides surveillance, intervention, testing, education, and care to prevent and control the spread of sexually transmitted diseases. It also provides funding for HIV testing at local health departments, correctional facilities, colleges and universities. Other funding covers care and case management services for HIV infected individuals. The Division of Tuberculosis Elimination provides diagnostic testing screening, tracing of contacts, and suspects to identify active infections and prevent the spread of tuberculosis. It also provides medicines, consults on recommended treatment, and implements measures to assure that therapy will be completed. West Virginia has a low rate of tuberculosis, and this can be attributed to the continual surveillance an emphasis on prompt initiation of appropriate treatment. The Division of Epidemiologic Informatics and Evaluation oversees West Virginia's statewide immunization information system, the West Virginia Electronic Disease Surveillance System, and the National Syndromic Surveillance Program in the state. The division supports the health information exchange and assist providers and healthcare facilities to meet the requirements of the Federal Meaningful Use Program in immunization, electronic laboratory reporting, and syndromic surveillance. The West Virginia Office of Laboratory Services, or OLS, 
is the state's public health laboratory. Our mission is to promote and protect West Virginia's public health by supporting state and local disease control efforts. We accomplish this through diagnostic testing, prevention of metabolic disorders detectable at birth, and assuring quality testing in clinical and environmental laboratories statewide. The OLS is a highly specialized laboratory that strives to protect lives in West Virginia communities. We are equipped with sophisticated instrumentation and staff with expertly trained scientists. We deliver reliable answers to health officials and healthcare providers to assist them in making life-saving decisions. Examples of testing that we perform include screening of West Virginia newborns for metabolic and genetic diseases, water testing in response to natural and man-made disasters such as floods and chemical spills, microbiological testing for food and waterborne pathogens to keep your food, water, and milk safe for consumption, pool water testing to determine if a pool is safe for swimming, testing for rabies virus in animals for people waiting to decide whether to undergo rabies treatment, threat preparedness related chemical and microbiological testing for agents that threaten our national security, response to communicable outbreaks such as flu, enterovirus, and novel strains of bacteria, support epidemiological investigations and evaluations and serological testing for transmittable and chronic diseases such as hepatitis and HIV. We work closely with a network of federal, national, and state public health laboratories, including the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, the Environmental Protection Agency, Food and Drug Administration, Federal Bureau of Investigation, and Department of Homeland Security. We also work with state agencies such as the Office of Maternal, Child and Family Health, Division of Epidemiology, Environmental Health, Emergency Medical Services, Center for Threat Preparedness, National Guard and local health departments, and clinical health care providers. In addition, our laboratory scientists provide continuing education and training materials to clinical and environmental laboratories across the state. We ensure that laboratories and their staff are licensed and certified to meet all clinical, environmental, and federal standards of excellence. The West Virginia Office of Maternal, Child, and Family Health provides a foundation for improving and ensuring health outcomes for West Virginia's mothers, women, children, and youth, including children with special health care needs and their families. More specifically, our office seeks to assure access to quality care, especially for those with low incomes or at a limited availability of care, reduce infant mortality, provide and assure access to comprehensive prenatal and postnatal care for women, especially low income and at-risk pregnant women, increase the number of children receiving health assessments and follow-up diagnostic and treatment services, provide and assure access to preventive and child care services, as well as rehabilitative services for certain children. We also implement family-centered, community-based systems of coordinated care for children with special health care needs. And we provide toll-free hotlines and application assistance for pregnant women with infants and children who are eligible for Medicaid. The current top three priority health initiatives for West Virginia's maternal and child health populations are First, decrease smoking among pregnant women. Second, reduce the incidence of prematurity and low birth weight. And third, reduce the infant mortality rate, focusing on racial disparities and sudden unexplained infant deaths. Examples of services supported by the Office of Maternal, Child, and Family Health include, right from the start, the state's perinatal home visitation and care coordination program, birth to three, newborn metabolic screening, adolescent health activities, family planning services, and the Children with Special Health Care Needs Program, which provides assessment, treatment, and care coordination for children at risk of or diagnosed with chronic medical or disabling conditions. We also support violence and injury prevention activities, home visitation programs, and the oral health program. 
In addition, our office is responsible for systems building and infrastructure services, including provider recruitment, policy development, toll-free referral and information hotlines, quality assurance monitoring, data collection, and evaluation activities. The Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, better known as WIC, has been improving healthy pregnancies and preparing kids to learn for 40 years. The program provides nutrition counseling, breastfeeding support, free healthy food, and referrals to other health and social services for pregnant women, mothers, infants, and children up to their fifth birthday. The West Virginia Bureau for Public Health administers the WIC program with 22 state staff and approximately 220 local WIC clinic staff. WIC services and foods are recommended by the Institute of Medicine and governed by the United States Department of Agriculture's Food and Nutrition Service. These programs have been shown to promote positive birth outcomes in women and reduce the risk of disease in adults and children. WIC is not welfare, it is a short-term program designed to improve lifetime nutrition and health for West Virginia families. West Virginia's WIC clinics currently serve approximately 50,000 mothers and young children each month. That's one out of three pregnant women, three out of four infants, and one out of four children between one and five years of age. Trained WIC nutritionists, registered and licensed dietitians, board certified lactation consultants, and breastfeeding peer counselors are available at local WIC clinics for services such as one-on-one -on -one counseling, group sessions, and online classes. WIC state agency staff develops nutrition education and breastfeeding support materials, monitors and supports WIC clinic operations, and authorizes WIC approved grocery stores. There are more than 320 West Virginia WIC approved grocery stores that make shopping for WIC food easy. The eWIC card offers the flexibility to purchase approved food items with an electronic card at checkout, just like a regular debit card. Plus, the EBT Shopper mobile app allows participants to view WIC benefits and scan products at the store to see if they're WIC allowed. WIC also partners with private and public health care systems, education systems, and community organizations to strengthen the system of care and build a network of support for all West Virginia families. The offices of the West Virginia Bureau for Public Health work together with members of our community to support health through all stages of life. While some programs focus on providing resources for healthy beginnings, others provide support for long, healthy lives. We hope you've enjoyed watching this video and have learned about some new and interesting components of public health in West Virginia. If you'd like to learn more about the Bureau for Public Health, you can visit our website at dhhr.wv.gov slash bph.